How's it guys? Welcome to my next video in Arc. Today I'll be doing a video more centered towards beginning and creating a new survivor and the way you should go about building up a base and starting up. So here's my new survivor. So this is on an accelerated server because I would ra much rather show you more in a limited time space. So that it is now, this server is 10 times all. So our, my new survivor, his name is Loxley. And I would recommend spawning towards the lower right hand side of the map. These are more, uh, more areas of beach. And the threats that you would find here are much weaker and easier to deal with for the new player. So you start off on level 0, but you almost immediately get your level 1. So my level up, since this is a PvE server, I focused mostly on health, movement speed, weight and stamina. So you would see me putting my points mostly into those stats. Initially, I would recommend getting a, this engram for stone hatchet as well as a campfire. So these are your primary farming tools and a campfire will allow you to cook the meat that you harvest so that you would never have to get never have to starve so over there we can see a player uh, you can see the red numbers so these damage numbers appear in different colors for different situations so when it is a enemy controlled dinosaur or the source of the damage is a is an enemy player then you'll see the damage numbers appear in red you'll see your own damage numbers that's the damage damage you inflict to others as green and then the yellow damage numbers are when it is a computer controlled a wild dinosaur that is attacking uh, is attacking a, a structure of yours or a dinosaur of yours or yourself you'll see a yellow damage number so your base ingredients or your base resources that you would want to get immediately are wood thatch stone and flint so use using a pick so the first thing I would create is a pick use that to get uh, an, uh, enough for a hatchet so now you can see I have my primary farming tools so you will encounter a few wild dinosaurs a while on the beach, but they are not very threatening. You can see that Dodo there, he's not going to aggro onto me. He's not going to attack me at all. The dinosaurs you would like to watch out for is a Dilo. This has a blinding attack as well as a, a decent damage for a new player, especially when you have no armor. So you'd like to learn a bit of, a bit of defensive tools such as a spear and a bit of armor so the armor will also protect you from the elements that is the cold and the heat so in the night it can get quite cold and in certain areas of the map it also gets extremely hot so these changes in temperature will affect your body it will affect your health and it can make you use water faster it can make you heat up and lose hp so here we can uh, we're getting our first amount of meat so that we don't starve so this is something that you want to do early on to harvest some meat so as you can see a pick and a hatchet have two different uses so one would get more hide and one would get more meat so as you can see the hatchet got more hide while the pick got more meat so at the moment since i'm looking for meat um, i decided to use the pick so all you have to do is in your campfire put some sort of fuel which is the thatch or wood and light up the fire throw your meat on there and within a few minutes you'd have some cooked meat which you can eat you should not you should not eat raw food since you would lose hp and it is not wise so next you will have to you can throw away any resources that you might have gotten that you don't need um you should definitely watch out uh, of your weight limit so currently my weight is at 100 so some of the resources that we'd be gathering, such as wood and stone, are extremely heavy and it could slow you down if that if you reach a certain percentage of your total weight limit and uh, it will stop you if you hit your weight limit completely. Uh, if, if I get the resources that amount to 100, then I will not be able to move at all and this can be a very bad situation if I aggro any dangerous wild dinosaur during this period. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to collect a few resources to build a storage box which I can dump all my uh, unwanted resources in and keep it for use at a later stage. So another thing to note is that uh, what I grabbed from the bush right there was fiber which is needed for a storage box as well as berries. So berries are good uh, for a new player, someone who just began and is having trouble finding meat or hunting any dinosaurs. Two things you could do is one is you could fish 
and um, there's a very uh, weak fish that you could kill and cook the meat and then you could eat that or if you're really having a hard time then you could just eat the berries it gives you a very limited amount of food but it could keep you going until you find a more solid source of sustenance so right here i'm gathering enough fiber to make my cloth armor so this is the primary type of armor that you'd be creating so it will keep you safe somewhat from the elements as well as from the from any wild dinosaurs so i'm now uh, queuing up so what i normally do is i put the items that i wish to craft into my quick bar so that i know when i have enough resources for it it immediately changes to a white color and then i could click it on my click bar on my quick bar and i can create it and then you can once you've created it you can put it onto your equipped items on the right as you see and then uh, i now have some armor so i tend to make a full set of armor cloth armor is very light as well so it's not going to weigh you down there are certain types of armor that we might come across in a future video that weighs uh, weighs quite a bit such as four armor but that is only important much later in the game Now I'm deciding on a few uh, engrams to spend. So I decided to get a mortar and pestle as well as spark powder. But as you can see, I have an excess of engram points to apply. So the mortar and pestle and spark powder will come in use later on. I also learned a slingshot, which is a very primitive, uh, both defensive as well as offensive uh, weapon. Uh, so I'll show you the uses of that in a bit. It helps with uh, taming, taming wild dinosaurs. It's to knock them out as well as against other players, since the players will mostly level up health, uh, but not torpor level. The torpor level tells you how close you are to getting knocked out. So once you reach a certain amount, then you'll fall unconscious. So this can be used against any enemy players that are attacking you, since they might have higher health, but torpor will not be upgraded. So next I decided that I needed a base. I needed an enclosed space. Oh, so I, I actually met ran into a player here. But uh, he looked very threatening at first, but uh, I found that he wasn't too threatening. He gave me the universal sign of friendship. I replied in kind and I decided to give him an offering of meat in order to leave me alone. So since this is a PvE server, uh, he has the ability to look through my storage boxes as well as my campfire. So unfortunately for him, I had nothing to steal really. So he didn't take much from me, but this is another reason that you would want to build a base which he would not be able to enter. So I gave him a bit of meat. He replied with the uncooked meat, which is not a big deal really. So he paid me back more than I gave him in fact. And then I bid him farewell and he was on his way. So I put that meat to cook immediately. So you'd want a constant supply of meat because at certain times you would run out and then at the time you need it most you'll find that you don't have any available so you definitely want to keep some cooking at all times I can see him in the distance attacking some sort of wild dinosaur so I began gathering the resources to build a thatch base so this base needs thatch fiber and wood uh, there you see a, dial a, di a dialo um, but I think he got a bit spooked out when I laid the foundation. So I'll just leave him be for now. I haven't made any spears or any kind of weapon yet. So I'm not too keen to engage him. But I'd rather just focus on my base. So as you can see, the first thing you need to build is a foundation. So you need a foundation to lay down a foundation in order to put walls, uh, to place them on walls. They will snap automatically. Uh, if they are placed correctly so i like to build a two by two to begin just to close myself in and to start building a bigger bigger storage boxes so that i can store more and higher importance items so i began chucking out a few of the unwanted items since it was just taking up space and then i continued to farm up until i had enough resources to complete my initial base i wanted to show you how to tame a dinosaur so we'll begin with this dodo so as you can see i've made a slingshot so a slingshot has no ammo uh, the amount of stone that you pick up will become your ammo so each unit of stone will become one shot of your sling so as you can see you just uh slingshot the 
dodo a few times and uh, it'll eventually become unconscious that seems like another player on a t-rex so i don't really want to mess with him so then what do you do you access you can access it okay so i'm thinking this should be a pve server so he decided to impress me i guess and uh it does seem to be a somewhat friendly server uh they didn't bother me too much but this on most servers that are old they are not wiped often and they are uh, up for a very long time you get an alpha tribe emerging with many of the biggest dinosaurs so commonly on more pvp servers they would tend to wipe out uh, smaller tribes as well as single solo players uh, and then keep that dominance over the server so uh, that's why i ch rather chose a pve server just to get this guide uh, working instead of getting hampered by other tribes so i've been having an issue where my inputs are doubled so you can just forgive the name so there now that you've tamed your first dodo you want to keep him safe so smaller dinos you could pick up and uh, move as you please. Others you'd have to get them to follow you and guide them towards the safe zone. So I just decided to complete the complete the base. There's that guy had a peek around which I was not extremely comfortable with. So I quickly threw together a door. Oh, and, and by default, a lot of the wild dinosaurs, when you tame them, they are immediately set to follow you. So this could become very dangerous uh, especially if you want them to stay put this dodo would have walked straight out of the door and uh, any threats awaiting would have very quickly disposed of it it's just about becoming night time so another thing that i would really like to build is a torch so a torch is one of the primary engrams that you start off with you do not need to learn it it uh, is already learned from the beginning so you need very minor resources to in order to build it flint and a bit more so once you have it it provides very limited light in an area around you but it could be really good especially when if you decide to go exploring and uh, in the night it, it gets extremely dark the next item i decided to build was a spear so a spear is a very effective item when hunting dinosaurs for meat as well as for engaging other players if you need to i'm hoping not to be not to need to do that but you never know so it's best to create quite a few of these spears since on each attack they have a chance of breaking so it's best to keep around maybe six to ten spears at a time the spear also has an alternate attack where you could throw the spear so this also results in you losing your spear so either way it's best to have a few of them they do not weigh very much so you could carry a few of them around you at all times uh, i decided to learn a standing torch so this can provide light in an area around where the torch is placed. So it's good in, if you would like to be crafting or mining in a certain area and you do not want to carry the torch around with you. This serves the same purpose as a torch, only thing it can't be moved, but uh, it can be on at all times while you do other things. You don't have to have the torch out with you at all times. So I've stored the spear in my quick access bar to pull out whenever needed. So I'll just, just to show you the throne attack, uh, that uh, will give damage as well as the melee attack. So the, throw, the throne spear attack will give more damage but will result in you losing the spear instantly. So the next item I decided to craft was a club. So this is serves a very similar purpose to the slingshot but doesn't deal as much damage to the dino as the slingshot does. So this is also for knocking a dinosaur out and can be used on many, many of the smaller dinos that you see in this area. So even dilos can be tamed for defensive purposes. So this dinosaur can also be tamed. Uh, well, if you could call it a dinosaur that is, but it is tamed passively. So that means you do not need to knock it unconscious in most cases you put the desired food into your last inventory slot and uh, when you get near them it'll offer you the option to to feed the the, uh, the dinosaur but a lot of the times you need to follow the dinosaur until it gets hungry again 
and then continue feeding it until the taming bar goes up. So while we have some time, we can discuss the, the taming bars. So when you knock out a dinosaur, it has an unconscious bar. Once this depletes, the dinosaur will wake up. So that's when you need narcotics or narco berries to remote feed to the dinosaur. And then it will keep it unconscious while it eats. So you place the meat in its inventory and then it will eat when, when it, it, it gets hungry enough. And then it will tame over time. That's when the taming bar comes in. With each bite of food, the taming bar will increase depending on the level of server to so the rate of the server. If it's an official server, it might take extremely long. But on this server, it doesn't take long at all. So I've killed this dilo for just for the meat. So to keep it going, keep that meat supply going at all times. So I just ran back to base and toss it onto the fire. As you can see, um, my meat, my food level was quite low. So luckily I had some meat on me already. So next I wanted to build a few more defensive structures. So this is a pile of wooden spikes that you can place on the border of your base. So this will prevent players from getting too close to your base as well as bringing dinosaurs that would attack your structures and possibly break them. So this doesn't require a lot but it can be broken by enemy players with any kind of ranged attack. So this is it's very effective against players at a similar level to you who will not have the ability to break it. So as you can see, it's quite a big bunch of spikes. You can put it uh, across each wall of your base and it will prevent. So this can hurt you as well. So make sure you don't walk into it as well. Now that we have an enclosed space, which we can call our own, we can start building within it. So. The first thing I would recommend is a big, a large storage box. This can allow you to store up to 45 items at a time instead, as opposed to the smaller storage box we have on the outside. So now that we are starting to get a few more resources and things that we'd like to keep protected, uh, we could start building that within our structure and to protect it from any players who might come wandering this way. Recommend, recommend building a bed. So this will allow you to spawn at your base. If you do not have a bed, you'll have to spawn randomly. So even though you could spawn close to the area of your base, you'll not be able to spawn in your base. So this can be detrimental if you are getting raided and if you are being attacked, you'd like to spawn in your base to try and defend it. Certain items in Ark uh, will spoil over time. So an example of this is your meat that you've cooked. Uh, if cooked and uncooked meat, both will spoil. So you need a way of preserving it when you log off or when you go exploring and come back and in need of a meal, you'll need a way of keeping it, keeping it from spoiling. So the solution to that is a primitive fridge, which is known as a preserving bun. So this uh, bun needs spark powder in order to function. So as you can see, this meat that I put into it, the spoil times of them were not increased at all. So what I'll need to do is go and get a bit of resources as well as learn the engram for spark powder, which I've already done. In order to create spark powder, you're going to need a mortar and pestle, which I've already learned. And uh, to make a mortar and pestle, you will need stone and a few more items. And uh, once that is done, you will be able to create spark powder within the mortar and pestle. So from now on, you're going to see a bit more of you need a certain structure in order to build a certain resource or item. The amount of items that you build on your person are very limited and within a certain amount of time you've exhausted that list. You will not be creating items on your person from a certain point. So that's why I would not recommend taking any points into crafting speed as well as the simple fact that you do not ever need to craft faster and those skill points are better spent elsewhere. So as you can see, using stone and flint, uh, I can create spark powder. I didn't feel I had enough flint. So I went and I got a bit more 
from just outside my base. So as you can see, the hatchet will get stone from a pile of rocks, while the pick will get more flint. So these two items are used to create spark powder. So spark powder is also useful later in the game. Uh, it's also used for all kinds of ammunition and explosives. So this is an item which we'll be crafting a lot in the future. But for now, it's just for the preserving bin. I learned a bit of armor. So as you get more proficient in the game, you'd want to build stronger armor so that you could face off against stronger dinosaurs and hopefully tame them. At this point, I decided to explore around my base a bit and uh, all over the map you'll find these huge columns of light with at the base of it you'll find a supply drop so certain colors of supply drops indicates certain types of items that you will get the white drop being the lowest level so you have to be a certain level for you to access a supply drop as you can see i could access the supply drop there and i got very primitive items but very necessary at this stage of the game Next, I decided that I needed some hide armor to better protect myself from the elements and if I would intend on taking on any larger dinosaurs at this point of the game. So hide you need to get from wild dinosaurs. So by hunting and killing them as well and mining from them, you will get hide from which you could build your hide armor. So next, I wanted to show you guys how to build a raft. So a raft is very good for traversing the waters and allows you to get quickly to other sides of the river instead of taking the long way around. So in case you see a supply drop or a dinosaur you'd like to tame on the other side of the river, it could be more dangerous to take the long way around to run around the water. So you could easily build a raft. Now a raft, the problem with it is that all the resources that you need to create it, you'll not be able to hold on your person at, all the, at, at one time. So what you're going to need to do is harvest resources and drop them in the box. Next, I decided that uh, the dodo in my base was looking quite lonely, uh, so he needed a partner. So what I decided to do was explore the island a bit and look for a female dodo to pair with him. Now, this can be very advantageous to me since they would lay eggs. If you have a male and a female in the same area, then they are prone to laying eggs. So I managed to find a female dodo of a low level. Now, dodos, you do not need to find a high level since you just need them for the eggs. The eggs will allow you to make kibble which you could use to tame bigger dinosaurs. So the kibble from a dodo egg can be used to tame a dilo very effectively. Now your taming effectiveness depends on how many times they have eaten since they were knocked out and the amount of damage they took while being knocked out. So you would like the highest taming eff effectiveness since you will get more bonus level. After taming this dodo, I had to carry him all the way back to base and I joined him with his new partner. As you can see on top of them, this small picture of the heart that will tell you that they will soon lay eggs. So this is all for the first video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and join me next time.